here we are in front of Mary Queen of Scots. You obviously have a, a very close relationship with this figure of Scottish history. Can you tell us a little about your background and what is your interest in Mary and what inspired you to write the book? Oh, well, for many years I, I've been a community textile artist mm -hmm. and also created textile exhibitions. And I suppose with Mary, you know, in the first book I, I, I talk about her in a chapter called Power, but I was really interested in knowing what insight we would get if we used textiles as the prism right, right. of exploration. Uh -huh. Because I thought actually what was happening in women's culture in the 16th century and what did textiles mean to them and how did they use them? Yeah, I mean they're really central at this point in time, aren't they? They are. Age. Textiles capture the spirit of the age yes, in, yeah, in the Renaissance yeah. at this point. And you know, everywhere is just festooned in textiles. Yes. You know, they cover walls, they're on, you know, the bed hanging, ceremonial events. I mean, they're incredibly symbolic, aren't they? It, incredibly um, symbolic. They're used as a political tool. And they're a code. Yeah, you code, know, so it's very absolutely. much like you know, we try to unravel cryptic crosswords yes. or emojis yes. in the 16th century century, people would be doing that with the textiles they saw around them. Yeah, and they were well versed in that. They were, and of course the Mary story, most of her historians and biographers, particularly those that were contemporary to her, weren't interested in women's culture. No, no. So they didn't touch upon yeah. the significance of textiles yeah. as, a, as, a, as a means of revelation yeah. on, on Mary herself. Uh, but now we have become much more interested in the material worlds in which people, particularly women, inhabited absolutely. and what that can tell us about them. Yes, absolutely. So we're standing in front of one of the most iconic portraits in yeah. the National Galleries of Scotland, Mary Queen of Scots, standing full length in our black gown with our white gauze cloak, her French cap, or, or Mary Stuart Hood as it's become known as. What can you tell us about the, the colours that Mary is wearing in this portrait, the black and the white? Well, black was a very popular colour amongst the elite in the mm -hmm. 16th century because it was the colour of constancy mm -hmm. um, and also was the colour of statesmanship. Right. So Mary, again at this time, people choose their visual image yes. that they're going to present yes. to the rest of the world very carefully yes. and very thoughtfully. And so Mary has chosen this. It's not that was the dress she had in her wardrobe. No, put that no, on. That was clean that day that she'll put that <laughs> on. You know, it's because actually she wanted to show herself as a ruler yes. and as somebody that could be trusted. And more importantly, she's offset that with the white, as you say, of the ruff and the, uh, the cuffs and the veil. And white was the colour of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, more importantly, as this was painted in her captivity, the colour of innocence. Yes, right. And Mary wanted to emphasise that she was an innocent queen mm -hmm. yeah. uh, who was being held against her will. So we can see here in the inscription, just in the, the top left, um, the date 1578. And this portrait wasn't painted at this date. This is probably a later version after a 16th century portrait. Right. But we think that the 16th century portrait was painted when she was in captivity. So 1578, it's the 10th year of our English captivity, mm -hmm. isn't it? And so she's only 37. She's, she's only 37, yeah. So she spends a huge proportion of our, our life in captivity. Um, and at this point, where is she? Is she at Tutbury? Castle at this well, point. she's in one of the forty-five places that she forty-five places <laughs> that she was Such actually held in yeah, over yeah, the nineteen yeah. years of imprisonment in England. But um, I think at this point, ten years on, yes. then if if Mary did commission it herself, the original, uh, then it was in order to make sure that her presence was still being felt yes. in the wider world yes. when she felt increasingly that her cause and her case and the, the chance of her restoration were slipping away. Yes. Yeah. What is it that draws you to, to Mary Queen of Scots? You've obviously written a, a book about her and her relationships with textiles. Wh where has that interest come from? What spurred that on to, to create the book? When I was doing uh, my first book, Threads of Life, then I was writing a chapter of, on power and I decided to use Mary as the central character right, in that right. book. And when I did the research, then I discovered all the amazing uh, inventories that were yeah. done of, of what she inherited yeah. from James V and, and her mother, Mary de Guise, um, what she brought with her back from France yeah. when she was 18, yeah. and then what she left behind in Scotland. And also then the treasurer's accounts, yes. which really trace her kind of Amazon purchase list equivalent <laughs> of, of clothes, fabric, sure. thread, etc. through the time of her reign. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to correlate what Mary was doing with the textiles she displayed, she gifted, 
she created herself, yeah. with what was actually happening in her life, to see if we could then reveal more of her emotional state yes. and, in a sense, more of her political motives. Yes. And we know from her inventories, and in fact there is an inventory from 1578, that Mary had a really large wardrobe full of incredibly beautiful embellished clothes in a huge array of colours. Yes. And obviously we associate Mary with black, but actually she wore f a far wider um, kind of spectrum of colours, didn't she? What do we know about the colours that she wore at different points in her life? When she comes back to Scotland, she brings with her a, yes. a very lavish wardrobe. So you've got um, um, orange taffeta, mm -hmm. you've got violet um, uh, velvet, you've got yeah. all sorts of yeah. girls. So you've got this other kind of version yes. of a queen that we have never seen yes. because there are no portraits yeah. of this, of Mary wearing all sorts of different yeah. colours and bright colours uh, and often as they using cloth of silver, cloth of gold, gold braid, silver trimmings, lots of embroidery. Interestingly in the treasures accounts she continues only to order black Gosh. until Darnley comes on the scene ah, in 1565 okay. and when Darnley comes on the scene we then see Mary in the f those first months in that first June starting to order colour. Right. Now what's interesting to me in that is that She's using the treasures accounts to order that material. She has her own resources as yes. Queen Dowager of France, but she's using the treasures accounts, which seems to suggest to me that she saw Darnley as political business. Uh, okay. And so she's quite happy to yeah. use state funds yeah. to fund her wardrobe yeah. in order to entice Darnley to her side. Interesting. So Darnley is our, our second husband and he is the father of Mary's only child who is James the sixth um, and first, um, sixth of Scotland, first of, of England and Ireland and at this date 1578 Mary has been in captivity for around 10 years, she's not seen James since he was 10 months old. Yes. And obviously that had a huge impact on her, like her emotional well-being. Um, did she use textiles as a kind of way to help her through that period or to communicate with James? You know, did she, she did send James uh, both communications and gifts. Yeah. Uh, if she addressed them to Prince James, then seemingly they were returned or not delivered right, right. because he was king. Right. She had been forced to abdicate by that yeah. time. Then on coming into the Earl of Shrewsbury's care and his wife, who we now know as Bess of Hardwick, yes. would have had the camaraderie. You know, when you sew in a group, yes. then there's conversation, yes. there's laughter. Yes. You know, you're designing things yes. together, often with mischief, as they both did. Mm. And, um, and so they, they, they had designed uh, Mary and Bess, a set of other bed hangings, mm -hmm. um, in, in using small embroideries, which then would have been applied onto yes. much larger lengths yeah. of cloth as bed hangings. Uh, and many of those still exist in Oxborough Hall yes, in Norfolk and the yeah. V&A has some in its collection, Holyrood House has yes. two. It has um, one of the cats, doesn't it? Has it has one of the wonderful the cat. cats and of course with the cats you know you can see Mary at her mischievous best yes. because she's taken an original black and white woodcut. Yes. Mm -hmm. But coloured it in her embroidery, uh, a kind of red-brown to symbolise Elizabeth I. Uh, and also she has um, put into that embroidery, which wasn't there in Conrad's, a little mouse, which is running by the, the cat's paws. And tellingly in Mary's embroidery, then the cat's paw is trapping ah, the mouse's right. tail. Ah, right, okay. You know. So full and of the, symbolism there. And the mouse there. was, of course, Mary herself. Yeah. The relationship with Elizabeth and Mary, obviously, at times it was very strained. They never actually met, did they? They never actually um, met. What, what's the, the difference in the way that Mary portrayed herself in, in portraits compared to Elizabeth? Well, as we say, it's, you know, Mary takes the stance of showing herself as a, as a, as a ruler, a steadfast ruler. Yeah as somebody who's, who's steadfast to her faith, as yeah. well as to yeah. her people. And we can see um, that here, can't we? Because we've got the crucifix, yes. but we've also got the rosary, which is um, attached to her waist. And again, there's a, a cross there. And in the middle is the depiction of Susanna and the elders, oh. which of course is the biblical story. So she's again referencing her situation, yes, isn't she? Yes, yes, absolutely. Through her portraiture, so through paint, but also through embroidery. So she's very much portraying herself as a, a Catholic, Yes, monarch, isn't she? Yes. Whereas and, and not carrying objects apart from touching her rosary. Yeah. You know, whereas Elizabeth is seen, you know, holding a rainbow in yes. her rainbow portraits. You know, yeah. um, and, uh, and 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 she's always portrays herself as somebody who's completely uh, ornamented yes. by her position yeah. as queen. Yeah. You know. And at the time, 
although they didn't meet, Mary um, and Elizabeth sent portraits to each other, we believe? They sent portraits to each other and also Mary sent Elizabeth embroidery. Right. Um, so she sent her little nightcaps. Uh, Elizabeth herself was a, an embroiderer, we know, because she embroidered mm -hmm. book covers for mm -hmm. her father and his then wife, Catherine Parr. And so this was a very much a kind of gendered response from Mary to Elizabeth, needlewoman to needlewoman, woman to woman, mm -hmm. in the hope that it would soften Elizabeth's the heart towards her and yeah. maybe lead to yeah. um, uh, her liberation. Interesting thing she sent her was a, 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 a red silk skirt, right. which she then embroidered all over. Uh -huh with silver thistles and roses uh, and honeysuckles and thistles, other, other symbols. But red, of course, is the colour of blood bonds. Yes. And the thistles and the roses symbolised their two nations. Yes. And so it was a political gift right. as much as a personal gift. Yeah. And Elizabeth responded that she found it very nice. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and the ambassador who, gave the, who, who told Mary about it said it did seem that the Queen had become much softened towards her. Right. So it had done its, its, it done its, it's job. Done its yeah, job. Right. Yes. So looking at the portrait now, Claire, and you know, thinking about the research that you did for your book, is there anything that you're seeing in a different light after a conversation? Anything that kind of stands out for you? And of course, I know the portrait yeah. both from coming to see it, but also because you know, in my research, I was reading so many books about Mary, and this would always be one of the images that yes. was being used in the yeah. book. But to actually stand sh and with somebody else and share what, in different ways, we're seeing it is really interesting. Yeah. And like you pointing out with the uh, the crucifix, yes. the, the point about Susanna and the elder being the and the elders being the um, story that's being encapsulated in that is just really fascinating. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming here today because it's been really inspiring for me. Um, it's really made me think about Mary and her relationship with textiles, with embroidery and how central it was to her. So I've really, really enjoyed your, your input and thanks again for, for coming. Well. Thank you. Thank you.